Well, Victoria will be forced to refund about $7 million worth of taxes paid by electric electric vehicle drivers after the High Court ruled the charge is unconstitutional. Live to Victoria political reporter Simon Love. Simon, the state government says it has received that advice that needs to pay it all back with interest. Yeah, that's right, Laura. And the advice has come in the past week or so to Treasury. They will have to pay back the money owed by electric vehicle, uh, money paid by electric vehicle owners to the state government after the High Court found that that tax was unconstitutional. It was after two electric vehicle owners brought the case to the High Court. They challenged it. A ruling was handed down a month ago and then the government decided it needed to take further advice uh, before it could refund that money and Tim Pallas says that they will do that in the coming months. But the advice that I've received is yes there is an obligation uh, to repay it. Um, uh, I think we've even decided to be sufficiently generous, albeit that there isn't an obligation to pay interest. We'll pay interest uh, on the retention of those funds. And some immediate reaction for you now, Laura. I'm joined by the Shadow Treasurer, Brad Rosewell. So Tim Pallas now says the government will repay this money, but he says it could take a few months. Do you think that's good enough? The Victorian government has known that this has been an issue since October, since the High Court handed down a very clear ruling mm. that the collection of this tax was illegal. They now, on, you know, with 26 days to go before Christmas, say that it's going to take another couple of months to get this, these payments paid back to Victorians who have paid this tax illegally. Simon, frankly, it is not good enough. Uh, Victorians need money in their pockets now before Christmas, uh, and it's incumbent upon the government to deliver upon that. Electric vehicle uh, users don't pay the fuel excise that many fuel petrol vehicle users do around the country. This is not just an issue here in Victoria. Should the federal government look at this with the whole meeting of treasurers, maybe a Commonwealth road user charge to electric vehicles come in? Yes, but at a time when you're trying to get more EVs on the road, you can't put your foot on the accelerator to try and get more EVs on the road whilst putting your foot on the brake at the same time by taxing them. Um, governments need to decide. Yeah, we probably do need some federal leadership here, uh, and I'd be encouraging Jim Chalmers to consider that as well. well he did take an interest in this case, um, but do you think the government's been caught a little bit flat-footed here with this ruling? I mean, Tim Pallas, even though the High Court has said uh, that it's unconstitutional, he completely disagrees with it. Well, when the, uh, they introduced this tax, the Victorian Labor government introduced this tax a number of years ago, there were warnings even at that stage about the constitutional validity uh, of this tax being introduced or not. Uh, what we've seen through the High Court um, decision is that there are a number of state revenue streams, not just here in Victoria, but right around the country, which are now subjected to a massive question mark about whether states can actually collect those taxes or not. So it's un unearthed Pandora's box it has put a massive question mark over a number of state government revenue streams uh, and uh, we'll be interesting to see how this plays out in the next little while. Right, Brad Rosewell, thanks for your time. Appreciate Pleasure. It. Right, Brad Rosewell joining us here on Sky News, Laura. And the Premier, I asked her just a short time ago about this and the speed of which the payments would be to drivers. She said it's a matter for Treasury. As I understand, he is working with Treasury on how those uh, that can be uh, that can be actioned. That's very much uh, an operational matter. That is a matter for the Treasurer. So we'll wait and see exactly how long it takes for the government to pay back this money. The Treasurer thinks it's just north of seven million. When you add in interest, it could be a little bit more than that, Laura. Simon, thank you.